Humans, you see shit every day. Sure, we got science telling us how it all goes down, how it all works, the partnership, the connections. You got eyes, too, if you're lucky. They take in whatever you got rocking out in front of you, lit or unlit, depending on how drunk you are or what time it is. Like bouncers, those two eyes do the hard work. Allowing the images in, gatekeepers checking to see what you saw is on the list. A-OK, -okay, pass the mustard before they pass the information down the tubes you got to your brain meats. Translating the experience, the images right along with you, right along with you, partnered in the moments in the first line of defense against the horrors. <laughs> your eyes, man. They're the real heroes. Nothing you got. None of the equipment. Ain't nothing the rest of whatever you're lugging around could handle the responsibility your eyes got in this big, crazy, fucked up world we were all chucked into, whether we wanted to or not. You think your nose can take the pressure? <laughs> that chicken shit organ can't even take ragweed. <laughs> no. You gotta have an eye out for the terrors that ride and fuck around in this three-dimensional business. Sure, your heart keeps the lights on and your guts got their shit together, but you got a brain up there, comfy and cozy snug in your skull, just doing the math, and it is not ready. It's never fucking ready for the true nightmares that exist in the streets right outside your skin, and baby, let me tell you, there's a lot of them. And they all want to drive you mad. So you got to keep an eye out so you can see what's coming before it sees you. Lucky for me, I got a team, three more on mine. And they all got two eyes, so I was going in there with eight eyes total. That's the kind of math makes my brain comfy, and baby, I needed it. Because I saw some shit. But who hasn't? It was me, Chuck, Mocap, whose real name is Mo, but we don't call them that because their name is Mo. We call them Mocap because they love the fascinating world of motion capture performance pioneered by Andy Serkis. And then there was Declan Dixon, St. Bartholomew Hubbard Graves Mason III. We call him Gumbo. <laughs> now normally we don't get called out to the UK, let alone the third most popular city in the UK, let alone the most popular city in Scotland, but there we were, Glasgow. That's where the shit was going down. Now my team is a special unit of hard-eyed, steely nerve professionals they call in when shit goes down because you need a tank when that happens, and baby, that's us, we're the tank. Now tank doesn't stand for anything. We don't have a technical name, who's got time for that? We are an elite. Task force off the books, off the record, deep web, shadow funded. Our problems are global. We don't answer to any national government. We just go in when the shit goes down. Turns out, it was going down in Glasgow. <laughs> Me and the team were at the Thornwood tossing back a few cold ones because it's the only place within four minute drive down South Street where, it can guy, where a guy can get a good Vientist, <laughs> it's a fucking German beer, where a guy can get a good Vientsteffiner. We don't talk much. We didn't have much to say. That's a German beer. It's a Hellas beer. I looked it up this morning. <laughs> we didn't talk much. We didn't have much to say. Didn't know what we had in store, but we knew what we were going to do because we didn't have lunch yet. We weren't going to do it on an empty liver. And after a few pints and some veg, haggis, mac and cheese, and garlic bread, we were out and we dug into the dossier. Seemed that morning at the Box Hub Warehouse off South Street near Edsel and White Inch, a private limited company out of London incorporated on November 30th, 2023 called the House of Illuminati was hosting a two-day event, and my blood froze. As what I feared might be true came true before my eyes, it was listed as a, quote, immersive experience. <laughs> Those have been popping up all over the place in the last four years, with the market expected to double globally in the next 12 years, promising people enchantment, a gateway, a communal experience, fuck, it's looking like if you got yourself a big ass empty room, some scented plugins, a fucking fog machine, a shit ton of projectors and a good screensaver, you could turn anything into a break from reality. <laughs> but my team knew better. No one gets a break. This one was interesting because it was not a kaleidoscope lounge or a brunch inside a classic 80s movie or God fucking help you, a pop-up bar. <laughs> no, it was worse. This one promised whimsy. A Willy Wonka themed candy land for you and your kids called Willy. <laughs> Willy's Chocolate Experience. According to the 
the website. This was, quote, a place where chocolate dreams become reality. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be anywhere near a reality where chocolate can dream. The site promised a, quote, enchanted garden where kids can navigate through peculiar but enchanting gardens collecting delicious beans. A, quote, imagination lab where you should, quote, prepare to be captivated for, quote, mind-expanding projections, optical marvels, and exhibits that transport you into the realm of creativity, which all in all sounds like an entirely different kind of lab than the one that makes chocolate. But who am I to judge if you want to get fucking lit with your family? A, quote, twilight tunnel where you better, quote, get ready for an exhilarating and immersive adventure. And I was getting a little nervous by how many experiences were warning us that we needed to get ready and prepare for. <laughs> Because there were no instructions, only warnings that you better be fucking ready for whatever was going on in that lab and the, quote, dimly lit passage of Willie's chocolate experience. The, uh, the final, the final, <laughs> the final promise of this fantasy was, quote, enshrining entertainment where you will find, quote, cat catting live performances, quote, Karchi tons, quote, Exarcer Dre lollipops, and quote, a pasadiche of sweet teats. It was becoming clear, the closer we looked, that something wasn't actually anything about this chocolate experience. <laughs> Especially with the assurance that Twilight Tunnel would have debractions, vivu sound, and unspected twits with the angemic sounds that would be ungrievel and impretti, unless we were summoning some old ones with Eldritch speak in Willie's chocolate experience. It was apparent that this website was written by AI, but we had to be sure. So help me now, I kind of wish some Lovecraft shit was in there because inside was anything but impretti. We went in. Two by two, one locked right on the other's five o'clock, cause eyes front, cause you need four pairs of eyes when you're going in, cause you never know what you're gonna see. I kept one eye in front of me, one eye on Gumbo, one hand on his shoulder, reminding him that I got his back. I locked in on my partner in case he couldn't handle whatever was behind those doors and we went inside. The warehouse was big and fully sunlit through the skylight, so at least we could see what was coming. First thing was a blue foam brick wall flanked by jacketed stanchions like the generic trade show of your nightmares. In the center of the foam blue wall was a gold-plated gate saying, Factory. <laughs> so at least we knew where we were. <laughs> we went in. Chuck and mocap taking the lead, a classic mocap. Only someone who's enchanted by the leading motion picture technology would take the front. <laughs> Beyond the gate was four giant mushroom sculptures parked on either side, way back against the inline booth kit walls, looking about as whimsical as a tax software seminar. We made it over the astroturf bordered risers with a candy cane railing and giant lollipops staring bare ass naked in the middle of the exhibit hall like someone forgot to put them on the truck, giving us a great view of the above ground air conditioner unit, so at least we know the air was fresh. It turns out that was the chocolate river, apparently. But it looked like a good place to wang your shin to me. Over the river and through the open space concept woods we went, stopping briefly to take a selfie at the one single standalone oversized chocolate bar, into the hall dressed on the sides with pattern blankets and unframed floor length mirrors. I had to steer Gumbo, who was half bored with ennui, keeping him to the extremely open path, though the blankets for fear he'd cut his hands on the corners of the mirrors. This, it seems, was the twilight tunnel, which clearly AI didn't know what either of those words meant. In front of us, was another floor-length mirror, behind which was a lanky human being in a black smock with a mirrored mask and Weird Al Yankovic hair. He was known as, quote, the unknown, which was probably for the best. <laughs> I knocked Gumbo's shoulder, warning him that the next turn might be the imagination lab. He singled and sig I'm sorry, he signaled. I'm so, oh my God, guys, hold with me on this one, I'm sorry. This is gonna be a journey, okay? <laughs> He signaled for Chuck and MoCap to be prepared for anything because we were warned this quote may leave us spellbound. Spoiler alert, it did not. <laughs> Inside was a series of giant props like somebody looted a, a Build-A-Bear and left the pipes. There was a large card table with a human st in a striped apron handing out one single jelly bean per child <laughs> with a look of resignation. We asked if she was okay. She told us, is anyone? And we promised that we would come back for her. 
pressed on through the apathy into another open-air prop storage with concrete floors and blanket flanked. We watch more kids were given Dixie cups of either lemonade or trigger warning limeade. And I looked to Gumbo, who turned to me with a knowing look in his eyes. I know because I, I, I nodded because I knew that look. Where was the chocolate? We signaled to hold, but it was too late. Chuck and Mocap found the exit and we're already walking to the car. Gumbo and I shrugged and walked out because that was it. That was the whole fucking thing. In the end, the only thing more underwhelming than Willie's chocolate experience was the tale we had to tell. But then the calls came. Pissed off parents, TikTok vids of kids crying who had come dressed in Willy Wonka costumes with the promise of catgating live performances and a pasadise of sweet teats instead of giving harsh lessons. <sighs> These kids learned that day that maybe their parents are fucking idiots! Because who didn't notice that the entire website was presented by an organization called the House of Illuminati? And the whole damn thing was called Willie's Chocolate Experience! The typos alone were a flag... Oh, there you are. The typos alone were a flag redder than your kid's cheeks after they got done sobbing into their limeade. I can't even make the joke that this was truly a land of pure imagination because you had to imagine the whole fucking thing. Because Paul Connell already made that astute observation and was even less whims because he played Willy Wonka in the event for three fucking hours without a break. And then he told the press that they never got paid. Quote, the script of 15 pages of AI-generated gibberish of me just monologuing these mad things. The bit that got me was where I had to say, there is a man, we don't know his name, but we know him as the unknown. This unknown is an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. It was terrifying for kids. Is he an evil man who makes chocolate? Or is the chocolate itself evil? They even, they even misspelt my contract. But I do have a legally binding contract. <laughs> In the end, 850 Glaswegians were promised a refund on their ticket. But who could refund their minds? <laughs> Turns out this whole thing was the jelly bean brainchild of Billy Cool, who previously made his beans publishing AI-generated conspiracy novels. Oh, no. oh, According to Rolling Stone, quote, Cool also mentioned Gawa Bank Hub, a now defunct Glasgow food bank he co-founded, seemingly to note that he had nothing to do with the whole Wonka fiasco. He also went on to deny a rumor that he was using money from the event to pay for a wedding and a honeymoon. Quote, regarding a personal matter, the statement said, there will be no wedding, and no wedding was funded by the ticket sales. This is a difficult time for me, and I ask for your understanding and privacy. And this whole thing caught the eye of con man Billy McFarlane, who did Firefest back in 2017. And he reached out to Billy to invite him to help on Firefest 2. So the danger is still out there, both of them Billy's, and that's where my team comes in. Humans, we're not heroes, we're not soldiers, we're not even really a team. But we do keep a lookout. We keep our eyes open. We notice inconsistencies in the FAQ pages and deals on websites that promise an immersive experience. Because you gotta open your eyes, humans. You gotta read the fine print, check the details, because this is reality, humans! And nobody gets a break. I love you, good night. Oh, yeah. Woo!